Hello and welcome back fellow disc golf enthusiasts from around the world to the exciting conclusion of the 2023 European Disc Golf Championships. As they compete here in Tallinn, Estonia, a great venue for the sport and some great enthusiasm from the locals for that coveted European Championship title, this is final round back nine MPO lead card coverage brought to you by MDG Media. I'm Connor Wood and with me, Elias Lukanen. What is up, Connor? What is up, viewers? Super excited to be here for this final nine holes. As we're seeing, Dennis Augustson playing an incredible front nine, and he's having a huge nine stroke lead over the entire field. Almost looking like a victory lap, but luckily for the coverage, there's a lot of things that can happen on this one. Yes, and yeah, man, kind of pushing that second place for himself, not letting anybody else quite near him and looking to keep it that way as there's a lot of players still in contention. We're starting the back nine here on a pretty easy par four. It's only 193 meters. Shot off the tee is a straight driver shot. Some people going distance driver, some people going fairway driver. Important to keep it straight. Not to turn over to the right, because that right side OB is coming into play pretty quickly if you turn it over. If you throw the nice drive about 110 or more down there, you have a very simple shot to the green with only one big tree to miss. Certainly hole 10 playing as an attackable one. We see Dennis up first here and... He has pushed that one. Elias, did he come back in bounds? I believe he might have come back in bounds, but he missed the Mando on the left side of the fairway, which very rarely comes into play. So Dennis is going to have to go to the drop zone on this one. And at the same time, Jesse here going for a forehand, very common choice for him. But he looks to challenge that right side OB. We'll have to check whether he's in bounds or not. Jakob here pushing the flex out as he too really looking to navigate that width pushes towards the right side. I think the late stability of his disc keeping him safe. And we go to Albert now after some potentially errant drives. We see a similar result from him that late turn kicking it at a time where he needed that hyzer to flat and he too finds himself OB on the right side. Fairly shocking result for one of the more safe tee shots here. Dennis there from the edge of the OB line, meaning that he in fact did not miss the Mando, but rather just went OB. And he's not going to be in position for a par. So potential for the other guys here to take a stroke. Yes, there with a okay approach, but not a great one. He's going to have to make one from the edge of the circle if he wants to get a stroke. Jakob looking to shape this forehand hyzer into the green. That very last guardian doing its job will leave him with a slightly longer putt than he otherwise would have had, but certainly a look. This is Albert here. Second throw, but third stroke after his OB to the right. And look at the attempt there, almost throwing it in. Fires long. I think he is certainly aware with the nine holes remaining that he needs to go for everything to push those top three podium positions and currently sitting in third place. Yesse has a three stroke lead over him. Dennis here with a nice line, almost throwing it in as well. He did in fact have an eagle throw in on this very same hole in the first round from 105 meters. Jakob here trying to make a great putt, which he does. Look at that stroke from far side of the circle, too. Jakob had a really tough time on hole 7, taking a number that gave him some damage to the scorecard, but still able to perform for the crowd, compete for those final standings. And we see, at a crucial moment of his round, fantastic execution on that long putt from about 15 or 16 meters. Effortless placement and power from his putting form.
Yes, sir, with the patented step pot, but not quite able to drop it in this time. And he actually has a sizable comeback left. That is smooth from Albert Tam. Finds himself the par to the applause of the crowd. And he's done it in three throws, taking the par with that OB. Yes, a also left with some work to do from about eight or so meters. Does find that bogey save. Also took the OB on the right off the tee. As we go to Dennis now for his par. And to continue his bogey-free streak here in this final round. Let's go! Yeah, Dennis there actually getting the bogey oh. after that OB stroke as well, but he still has many strokes to play with. Still gonna have that nine stroke lead. So he has no trouble here on this back nine. Moving on to 11, very scorable hole. All of these guys looking to birdie this one as well. As it has the common theme of this course, you have that late low ceiling just about 20 meters before the basket, so important to keep the disc very low to the ground. You do have a couple of choices of lines. You can either go for a forehand around the outside or any sort of a backhand straight shot. Just need to miss those last two trees in the middle of the gap. And if you do that, you will definitely be inside the circle. You see Jakob with a great and decisive line there. Well done, low to the ground, navigating that low ceiling very delicately and slides his way up. A great touch. We go to Albert here, looking to shape the overstable forehand approach into the green. On pure hyzer, he's looking to play the width and get a great, gets a great forwards pushing skip as well. At a similar position to Jakob, both of them inside the circle, putting for their birdie here on hole 11. This one after the cut averaging a 2.49. Certainly one of the more attackable holes coming down the stretch. Wow, that is a low scoring average, but no wonder. Oh. As we're having another bullseye hit from Dennis Augustson. Able to clear out that bogey from the last hole just like that. And uh, that might be one of the lowest scoring averages I have ever heard of on a hole. But really showing off how high the level in Europe is right now, as we only have the top 50% of the MPO field after the cut from round three to round four. And yes, they're also there inside the circle. That's four great drives from our card. And as we look to finalize a star frame here, all four of our players in the circle, Jakob gets us started, his being the longest, even at that short distance. And Mentioning the talent in Europe, Elias, that's actually the second filter, the first being the country's available spots in this tournament and them selecting the best players from their nation, then getting cut to the 50%. Again, we are really seeing an amazing level of disc golf cultivated and showcased here in Europe. It's so cool to see on this final round lead card to have four nations represented. Albert here with a good strong putt there. He did have some putting struggles on the front. A theme that has unfortunately kind of continued for him throughout the tournament. But gets that one to drop. And then it's with just a tap in birdie. Moving back to eight under. He might still be thinking about chasing the course record that he himself set in the round one for just a moment and uh, overtaken by a junior shooting 13 under. So maybe something to still motivate him going for those birdies as we're going to be moving to one of the more difficult holes of the back nine. Hole 12, 237 meters, par four, another Slight low ceiling hole, at least off the tee, you're trying to drive a nice straight to right pushing shot. Most players going for a forehand. 
and um, if you get your drive down there 120 meters down the fairway a little bit to the right you're set up for another similar shape shot sets up really good for two it's flat to hyzer forehands and of course for Dennis it's two pretty basic backhand shots if he wants to birdie we see Jakob here really pushing the height as long as he can get straight enough with that nose up angle, unfortunately, he's not able to get around the corner, but still an absolutely fine spot there. Although he'll be pinched from the right side, getting that distance around the bend really opens up the angle and of course reduces the distance. Albert opting to go full hyzer on this one, really low to the ground, likely caught an edge there, although we didn't see the ground play. You could guess that it would most likely find a few skips in a healthy direction, we go to Dennis now. And what a beautiful line this is. Challenging the left side OB, but look at that. Oh. He has hit the bench and rolled back in bounds. It's looking like Dennis Augustin's tournament for sure, as he even gets the lucky breaks. Playing good and getting lucky is truly a sign. Of some some tournament. would say that uh, luck is only when preparation meets opportunity. And that looks to be apparent for Dennis here on this big stage. We see from Yese a great drive, very natural shape for him to throw. And just like that, he's given himself open access to the green for his second shot. And Albert here. He's far back, but still has a bit of an opportunity to get to the green. It's 130 meters sidearm from here, and that looked like it had the power if it just hadn't clipped one of the first branches just barely there. So he's going to be outside of circle two. Very easy par, but just not quite enough for the birdie. And we see the aggressive turnover roller from Jakob. You see the pretty extreme understability causing the disc to spin out to the right quite early on in its roll. And I think that that is intentional by him. Anything too stable would push straight and potentially find OB long, although it does leave him short. I believe it was his intended shape. Dennis Augustin coming in hot as well. Fires just a bit long of the basket, but a really nice line there. And he's going to have another chance for birdie, which he does not really need in this situation, but good for him. And yes, uh, unfortunate high release with the forehand, but wow, he has got through all the last branches going a little bit inside after that first branch hit. Very fortunate result for him. <laughs> Albert there turns around and says, guess it's just a layup. Just a little bit low from him from way downtown. Jakob with another long bid. Gives it the height and the width just goes a touch long. And Yese, despite his frustrations, certainly in the circle actually has the closest putt. We see Dennis first and just lethal, lethal execution on the green for Dennis Augustin. Nine under through this round so far on 12. Absolutely pushing the course record. Yes, I effectively had a tap in range, despite not liking his throw at all. Yeah, that's a birdie, a birdie. he's going to be happy with as it's For this level of players, it's not an impossible birdie, nowhere near that, but definitely one of the more difficult ones on the back nine. It's true, although after the cut, there was a huge statistical swing in terms of difficulty. Elias, would you like to guess what percentage of the field found the birdie? Really difficult question, but I would assume it has to be upwards to like 30-35%. It even made it to 45% here after the cut. Playing is hugely easier compared to its scoring in round 1 through 3. Speaks to the talent here once again. Yes, and in this final round also, I feel like everybody was just lighting the course on fire compared to the other rounds. Scoring, scoring even near the top was even better and... We're going to move on to another scorable yet dangerous par 4. 
open drive you have this OB line on the right that you have to stay left off with your drive. Most people going for a nice big hyzer over the OB then it's obviously gonna go over the inbounds area with the left hand backhand. And if you get a nice 120 meter hyzer out there down the fairway you're gonna have a straight touchy look to the basket. There's OB on both the right and the long side of the basket well inside the circle. So you do need some good touch. Dennis here looks to have thrown another just beautiful drive. Absolutely. You see him work his way up to that prodigy distance banner of 100 meters being just behind it. He's thrown a good 123 right there. Very nicely done. His left-handed shape allowing him to push forwards at the end of the flight. Whereas for these right-handed backhand throwers. Oh, and a great break for Yese bouncing off that net from the out of bounds getting into a pretty great spot the more right he was the more it opened up his second shot especially if he wants to throw forehand but you saw the danger there for these right-handed players especially often throwing the overstable drivers to ensure that they don't end out of bounds right it is common that they contest out of bounds left Jakob right on the edge We'll have to check whether that one is going to be inbounds or not. Could be either way, honestly, because there are these wires on the ground marking the OB line very precisely. Thank you to the tournament organizers for that. And uh, the w with, the w with the wire, it's very clear whether you're OB or not from close distance, but from far away, we couldn't quite not see. And Alberts, that's the perfect shot. He's going to have a great chance for a birdie. Out of curiosity, Elias, are the wires raised off the ground or are they flat on the grass? Uh, mostly pretty much flat on the grass. Might be a centimeter or two up at some points to um, just... Wow, I almost lost my words looking at that Jesse Neiman in the forehand. What an incredible shot from 120 meters away. He's inside the circle there, taking advantage of the great break. And Jakob, potentially an opportunity for him as well to take advantage. Do believe he was just barely in bounds, but unfortunately not much progress on his second shot is playing for par. Dennis here, an open look to the green off a perfect drive. And slides his way up into the circle as well, into that range that he is so comfortable and so competent at putting with. Looking to extend his lead, you see Team Sweden behind him there. And just how much it means to them to not only have a competitor on the lead card, but for him to have such an impressive performance representing their nation here in the European Championships. Truly special to see. And the Swedish team had an incredible vibe throughout the entire tournament. Shout out to Sweden for that. And Jakob there had a great opportunity to get possibly one birdie here, but that was just an incorrect... Um, Unexpected low forehand from him, as we see Jakob with a nice approach, able to clean up that mistake in the previous shot and have a stress-free, what I believe to be a par after the hopefully inbounds drive. Yeah, and you just touched on Albert's low shot to the ground. We see him looking to put that one in almost. Unclear if that was a real bid or just a very precise layup, but almost gave it a chance. Dennis, speedy on the putt as usual, and speedy with the birdies is 10 down here already on hole 13, even with the bogey to start off his back nine. To come into this round with that lead and still put on such a dominant performance speaks volumes to where he's at in his career right now. A very good birdie for Jesse Niemann as well, shaking his head. He knows he got away with one a little bit there with that tee shot but had a great upshot and a fantastic putt to close it out as he's put together three in a row and continuing to separate in that second place position at 27 under. Neither Albert or Jakob able to find the birdie here as they continue to battle for third and fourth. We saw at that front nine check-in that Jakob certainly competing as well with the chase card. Albert finding the par and remaining at 23 under.
I'm pretty excited to see what happens on this hole 14 as it has been consistently one of the easiest holes in the past three rounds and that's gonna be the theme for this round as well with the cut for the final round and uh, this very reachable off the tee you can go for the safe shot just a hundred meter shot off the tee leave yourself with a short easy approach to the green but we did see in round three at least Albert went for it off the tee and was able to reach pin high on the right side so that would be great to see from the card if somebody is feeling very aggressive and there was a nice wind today it was a bit of a right to left wind not really much headwind on this one so potential for reaching the basket but from Dennis definitely gonna be not the case and you see him with a center drive into the fairway, a lower speed disc there to control some of that fade and distance. And he's right in the sweet spot that should open up for him if he'd like it, the forehand into the green. Yesay as well opting to throw the forehand, also effectively taking that very difficult eagle out of play. And that throw potentially taking birdie out of play for him. You see him trying to wipe his shoes and his foot a bit, I think a little bit of a slip a touch more moisture in this round than previous ones. And Jakub, he's going for it. A big shot here with that distance driver. Look at this line. And he's going to be in circle too. What an incredible drive. Perfectly in control. Let's have another look at that. This was never in any trouble off the right side OB and also staying clear of the left side OB. Just a beautiful showcase of that signature Jakub Semerad overstable flex shot. So clean and so forwards pushing, able to use those angles in such a way that with the turn and fade, always pushing forwards rather than left or right. Albert playing the huge hyzer here and he gets this late turn over out of bounds. Can he swing it back in in time? It's a tall order. With the barrier and the spectators, he is unable to remain in bounds. He went out of bounds pretty early playing that steep hyzer release. We'll see how much distance he is given by the card in terms of where he crossed. We go to Yesse now. Speaking of distance, he needs a lot of that here. Probably about 150 or so into the pin. And he's gone long. Wow, that's some huge power able to go along with the hyzer. I'm sure he's not quite happy with that shot as he's not very close. But still a possibility for the birdie. As Dennis gets a huge skip off the approach. That's unfortunate, but luckily for him he has a 9-stroke lead over Jesse. So should be no problem there. And still a very makeable putt for his putting abilities. Albert actually with quite good distance in terms of where he crossed is left with that open hyzer and skips one up into the circle. Should be an easy par save for him. We go to Jakob. This is for Eagle. A huge drive leaving himself with that opportunity. Although the low ceiling on that distance of a putt, he did really need to test it. And we see him test it there. Unfortunately failed the test, but certainly an amazing drive and still a very manageable birdie. Yes, so they're not quite able to capitalize the birdie. And Dennis also not quite able. That might have been a rare air ball from Dennis Augustson. One of the few ones that we have seen throughout the tournaments. And it really speaks to how good his putting has been that even from circle two, we are surprised by the air ball. He set up such high expectations for his ability both off the tee as well as putting, and for good reason. We see from Jakob there a short birdie putt after his eagle attempt, and he's continuing to end strong in his round, despite falling off in pace with these lead guys here. Certainly vying for every stroke he can in this final nine. We walk to hole 15, where we have only four holes remaining until we crown your next European champion. Yeah, hole 15 here, another very scorable par 4, players are figuring it out in this final round, also 
The wind is pretty good on this one. There's not much headwind, more of a left to right wind for this low ceiling drive that you have to keep under the branches. You can throw it either straight or if you want to play it extra safe, you can go with a slight turnover or a forehand to more of the right side of the fairway. <laughs> Wherever you end up on the fairway, you usually have a straight-ish approach to the screen. You might be able to swing it around a little bit from the left or from the right, depending on where you end up on your drive. But it's a nice two-shot hole. Neither of the shots are super difficult, but they definitely need to be hit. And Jakob with a beautiful navigation of that low ceiling, you see the height just forwards pushing the whole way and really nice distance up there. You can see between the last hole and this one, he knows he has nothing to lose and I think he's having fun attacking the course and putting on a show for the crowd at this point. Dennis getting his drive turned over as well, cleanly through the trees also into a great spot here we go to Yesse looking to shape the forehand yeah that's a nice play from Yesse knowing that he's the most comfortable with that forehand through this low ceiling gap it's not the tightest gap in the world at least uh, width wise it's a pretty wide one but the low ceiling really comes into play and possibly this forehand's able to navigate the low ceiling better then the backhand as the forehand is released from a little bit lower. And that's going to be four great chances for the birdie. I definitely think that having a comfortable forehand off the tee is a great tool on this layout because of the recurring low ceilings. We see Dennis here with a great use of the under stability, but in fact, I believe kicking off a tree or potentially fading out from the swap of angles unclear goes Obi long and to the right, although certainly cross the pond and even finding too much distance. Dennis will have a long look for his par save, potentially a bogey coming down the stretch, but as you mentioned, a very comfortable lead for him and Yesse absolutely lacing the gap and even firing a bit long. Going with that stiletto of his that he just loves on those long control forehands. We're going to see a similar shot from Albert here. Although this looks to slow down much better. And he's going to be inside the circle there. Nice forehand. And Albert still very much in position for those podium places. He needs to get a few birdies at the end to solidify his chances. And Jakob here with such a huge drive. We see his second there, even with the tree kick, finds himself up inside the circle. And really nice of Albert to get into bullseye without his disc at any point in this hole, more than a meter or so off the ground. Two low lasers for him. We see Dennis's long bid and his chance at the par save. We'll be left with a short bogey putt, dropping to 35 under, perhaps a window of opportunity Although, with the holes running out, might not be enough, of course still. This is an open door for Yesse now, in second place, to find one on Dennis. Important pot not only to chase down the first place, but also to give himself the best opportunity for the second. And he has made it for birdie there. Nice pot with that Yesse Nieminen step. Just look at the technique. Just following through with the step, not pushing with the step as much as just kind of falling forwards, ensuring that you finish the putt with a nice follow through. He's really got that step butt down. And I love the confidence you knew that he knew it was in. Right out of the hand, he walks it in. Albert securing his birdie a little bit low and left side, but low enough to find the heart. He finds his second birdie here on this back nine. And Jakob with the shortest putt for the three. Between these last two holes, having some great shots and just huge distance on both of them. He puts his round score back to even after taking a huge number on hole seven. A great bounce back for him in this final round, able to enjoy himself. 
and fight back, currently sitting at 20 under, a very respectable score in the tournament. And Dennis As we see, getting yeah. a bogey on this one, which, well, for him probably is not going to matter very much, as he still has seven strokes with only three holes to go. And the first one here, 16, not really setting up for a lot of stroke swings. You can uh, get the birdie here, but you can also get the par very easily. It's a low ceiling shot, just 100 meters. Players really have to make a choice whether they want to throw an extremely low driver shot or whether to want to push that ceiling and possibly throw a slower disc mid-range maybe, or even Jakub I could see going for that harp. Looks like he is going with the, with the slow disc here. Trying to push the ceiling as high as possible. And uh, sometimes that might cause some, cause some troubles as he hit the very first branches of the tee and has landed significantly short there. Yes, a looking to shape the forehand. I think this is a very nice yes, a shot right here in terms of its shape. He also has it just a little bit too low or rather in contrast to Jakub's, they're both short, but yes, a threw the nose down and Jakub threw the nose up both finding effectively the same result there. Albert as well pushing the height of this ceiling, that touch of nose up contributing to an early fade, but does slide his way into the circle. Nicely done as he looks to continue to end strong, sitting four strokes behind Yesse with three to go. And Dennis here going very high. That's a lucky break. He might have very well hit that first branch and even kicked towards OB. But now he's going to have a stress-free par from the open field. Possibly even a run if he wants to give the audience some entertainment. But first Jakob here from far ways out. Just a layup. And he pins it. We'll be left with a tap-in especially as the pressure mounts towards the end of a huge tournament and moment like this you really do want to leave yourself with that tap in not add any mental fatigue or stress of needing to make those putts in the tester range we see dennis do the same albert certainly going to be going for this we'll see if he can give it the height and the commitment and he does but doesn't find the width just off the left side chains at least a good adjustment and, as I mentioned, commitment to the elevated bid. Dennis here with just a very short comebacker. And that's good for him. Not a guy that would miss those short inside circle putts, as uh, he actually putted very well throughout the tournament, finding 91% C1X putts. Just like that on hole 16, a par frame for our lead card. No strokes moving. We go statically into hole 17. An exciting one. Nice amount of people here. Even uh, with the private area and ticket sales, not a free access to the area, but a lot of people feeling like it's worth it to pay a little bit to watch this European Championships which I very much agree with. It was an amazing event. We're moving to hole 17 here, 99 meters, going a little bit uphill with another low ceiling. On this one, you have to throw your drive pretty hard to even reach the hole. And uh, if you kick any trees off the tee, you have a high likelihood of bouncing OB, either from the left or from the right. So this hole does produce some stroke swings Although with two holes left to go and seven strokes, it's looking pretty unlikely. However, for Jakob, Albert, Jesse, as well as everyone on the chase card, any stroke swing, even in the single stroke range, could be a determining factor in their final placement. We see Jakob get some good distance up the fairway and end to the left. Jesse here, trusting the under stability and getting a nasty kick. As he shakes his head, he knows he is well OB to the left, about halfway up the fairway. 
Albert here. We saw some struggles from him in the last round on this hole. And he has thrown another weak shot. He has missed the Mando, I believe, to the right. Couldn't quite see where the disc ended up. Might be either Obi to the right off the tree or miss the Mando. But either way, he will have to settle for bogey at the very best case, unless he throws it in. And even, especially if he went OB before the Mando, that throw-in is effectively impossible, potentially from the drop zone if he tries to go for it. Dennis Augustson putting his foot down as your leader, throwing a beautiful line drive on 17, showing you just why he has such a significant stroke lead and solidifying himself as one of the best currently in Europe, if not in the world. Wow, truly some impressive stuff from Dennis. And Albert here looks like he did miss the Mando, so proceeded to the drop zone. And he's definitely trying to throw this in. And look at that shot, almost able to put it in the basket and able to stay in bounds. So he's having a short putt for the bogey there. We go to Yese, who actually has quite a lot of distance up the fairway. Able to simply jump putt approach, he'll also be left with the bogey. Returning him to 27 under, going into the final hole. Albert, an important putt from that tester range and confident. Not the bogey putt you want to have to make, but after the tee shot, as you mentioned, Elias, pretty much best case scenario, although did almost throw it in for the three. This is Jakob for his birdie. And that's a nice birdie there. Able to push the score back under par, even with that plus seven on hole number seven that he had earlier. And Dennis here, 10 under for the round. What an incredible performance. And uh, thinking about the fact that if he ended his round right now, that would be his second worst round of the tournament. Shockingly good. And if I may offer some stats, Dennis Augustin has birdied 57% of the holes available to him in this tournament so far. Incredible birdie percentage and not that many bogeys on top of that. We're moving on to the epic finishing hole, hole 18 here. A huge downhill shot, 161 meters. We're going over OB for the entire way. If you're going for the right hand backhand hyzer, which everybody else besides Dennis will most likely go for. Even yes, as a forehand player with such a long distance, probably gonna go backhand hyzer. It's a pretty important shot for all of these players to solidify their oh, positions. Four up the leaderboard thank you, thank you, thank you. and the situation actually here well Dennis has won this tournament already let's be honest but yes he has two strokes on Jona Heinen and Tuomas Hyytiäinen who are at 25 under in the clubhouse aware of the circumstances we see a great drive there skipping just outside the circle Jakob Samarad ending with a solid tee shot for his round. We'll see if he can make that putt from just outside. You mentioned it for Dennis, a formality here at this point. Short of a absolute meltdown, can effectively walk away with this. And he puts a great drive out there with a beautiful skip into the circle. Dennis Augustin not letting up at all. Another great statistic for him had only five bogeys in the entire tournament and never had any double bogeys or above. Incredible play. And yes, actually here, knowing the situation, he's going for just a safe forehand. He knows that getting a bogey on this one is enough for him, but he will have an easy par there or even a run at the birdie if he wants that. Smart play there from one of the best players in Europe. Great performance from Jesse as well. And for Albert, he's only one stroke back of tied fifth place. So needs this birdie to get the top five finish. 
And look at that. Looks like, oh. looks like he will. What an incredible way to finish off the round in front of the home crowd. Absolutely, and a great tournament for Albert. Obviously not quite getting this final round finish that I'm sure he wanted to push for the lead, but I'm sure an incredible moment that he'll look back on a fond memory for him competing with the adoration and support of his fans here in Estonia. A really unique and special opportunity for this country as we hear the claps beginning. His caddy tells Dennis that those are for him. As in just a moment, we will crown your next European champion. You see what it means to Dennis as he soaks in the moment. What an absolute great, still young player. I believe Dennis, only 19 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Or uh, might be 20 years. Don't quote me on that. And fresh off from the Swedish Disc Golf Championship, which he absolutely destroyed by almost 10 strokes. But here, yes, uh, to finish off with a birdie, he can choose to lay up if he wants to, and looks like he does. Yes, Nimenen, a great performance, had a slightly slower start, but worked his way onto the lead card here in this final round and separated himself from third and fourth place nicely. That will leave him with a solo second. Incredible on this big stage, Jakob with a chance to end on the birdie from outside the circle and will have to opt for a three. A great moment for Albert here, after almost acing hole 18. Well done there. Tapping out before Dennis. Usually this is only made if the player who is uh, in the winning position has, have, has a very short putt, but Dennis is so confident in his putting abilities that he wants to tap out last from about seven meters away. <laughs> You love to see it. Jakob also able to find his way onto lead card here in the final round and represent his country. We see here Dennis Augustin. Dennis Augustin, your 2023 European champion. One of the best combinations of tournament performances that he could have possibly found, the Swedish national champion, and solidifying himself as currently the best MPO player in Europe. What a performance and what a tournament, Elias. Incredible play by Dennis. Great to see. A great human being, a great player. And to be so dominant with such a stacked field speaks of volumes to his capabilities as a professional, as a competitor, as an athlete. And we see the love from his fellow Swedes. Wow, that is just incredible to see. And you touched on it a little bit, winning by a big margin over the field. The biggest margin in the last five European Championships to win was actually five strokes by Simon Lizotte in 2018. So by far the largest margin of victory by Dennis here in the past 10 or 11 years in the European Championships. Just incredible stuff. Showing off how dominant he can be on a course that suits him very well. And uh, we're gonna have a look at the final results. Dennis obviously with that huge win over Jesse Nieminen, who was second respectively and tied for third. It's a tie between two Finns, two very good friends, Joona Heinonen and Tuomas Hyytiäinen. Shout out to Jona Heinen, who was third also in the last European Championships, showing off that he can perform on the big stage. Jona with that hot minus 12 final round. Thank you guys so much for an incredible tournament and thank you Connor for doing commentary with me once again. Absolutely always a pleasure Elias. This was a momentous occasion and history in the making here on MDG Media. If you'd like to support this coverage, you can of course always like, comment and subscribe. And if you're feeling extra supportive, you can check us out on Patreon. You guys are what help make this coverage possible and we'll see you at the next tournament.